The vision of the World of Healing podcast is to discover, celebrate, and reveal different types of healing techniques, systems, and philosophies. Through exploring and honoring these different practices of healing beliefs from around the world, listeners will be able to learn more about their different cultures and be exposed to ideas that they may have not heard before. Our vision is to try to expand the audience's mind about what is possible in the world of healing, while at the same time helping people realize that we are more similar than we are different. This is the World of Healing Podcast with Dr. Vanda Corbett. On today's show, we welcome Jocelyn Cope a brilliant physiotherapist from South Africa who specializes in scar and visceral manipulation. Okay, so now we're going to sink it. Ready? Ready. Ready? Ready. Okay. <laughs> so welcome to the first ever World of... World of Healing? Yeah. Welcome to the first ever World of Healing podcast. I'm Dr. Vanda Corbett, and I'm so excited today to be with my first guest, uh, Jocelyn Cope, who's a physiotherapist here at the Chiron Clinic, Hello. but she does much more than physiotherapy. So we're going to dive right in and find out all the cool stuff that she does. Okay, great. Let's yeah. get started. Yeah. So tell me what you do. Tell me about yourself. Um, so I'm a physiotherapist and I can do the regular physio things, but that's not where my interest lies. I'm more interested in the obscure kind of fringe aspects of physiotherapy. <laughs> um, I like working with the abdominal organs. We call it a visceral treatment. And I especially like working with scar tissue. So any operations, any traumas, I get in there and I get the scar tissue moving freely again. That sounds amazing. So what exactly do you do with the scars? Like do you manually work with them or what do you I do? do. Um, I mostly just use my hands, but sometimes I use capping. And it's all about working with the lines of tension in the body. So everything's got to move freely. Every time you bend your arm, you, you take a breath, you eat something, all the structures in your body have to slide past each other. And when you've got a scar, those layers get stuck together. Okay. Normally we can compensate for this, but sometimes we can't, and sometimes there are just too many things going on and you have a system failure. So I get in there <laughs> and I tension things. Um, one of my patients said that I was... I was surfing the scar, oh, so I worked along it. Yes, I yeah. follow, I ride the wave, and I, I just get it all moving nicely. Oh, wonderful. So how did you get into that? Like, where, how did that's you discover? That's a long story. We, got, we, we got want to time, go in We there. got time. So, like, how, like, because that's very fascinating, because you, um, I've been in, <clears throat> excuse me, the, like, health field for at least 15 years, and I, you're really the first person I've met that really works specifically on scars. Yeah, nobody knows about yeah. it. Scars are the it's future, people. <laughs> <laughs> because I know myself, who's had a couple of operations and surgeries and stitches and all that kind of stuff. Um, Jocelyn, just so you know, uh, personally helped me. I had a biopsy on my neck for a lymph node, and what happened was it was it really lumpy stuck. and gross and stuck and it wasn't moving. So what do you, like, how did you get into this? Like, how did you? So I studied physiotherapy um, and I'm South African. And in South Africa, anytime you study something health related, when you graduate, you have to work for the government for a year. Um, this is called a community service year. <laughs> Very different to community service in the, in the States. Yeah. Um, so I was posted to a pretty obscure rural hospital, my first choice, and while I was there, I met a visually impaired physio, Johan Ace. Hi, Johan. Um, he demonstrated this amazing technique. Uh, it was a technique involving fascia and getting it to slide freely, amazing. and I was inspired. I'd been struggling with, you know, what am I going to do with my life? Is physio really the right route for me? And once I found this fascial technique, I was like, amazing, this is what I want to do. So eventually I finished my community service year, went back to Cape Town, and found out where I could do this course, and it was in another city. And at the time, I, I was trying to pay off a mortgage. I didn't have any spare money to travel for anything. So I waited and waited and waited for this course to come to Cape Town. And while I was waiting and emailing the course conveners and emailing the lecturer and saying, please come to Cape Town, I did... <laughs> She's very persistent. I am very persistent. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I did every similar sounding course that I could find. Yeah. And one of these courses was to treat scar tissue, run by Marjorie Brooke. And yeah, I, I found my place in the physio world. It was amazing. Um, normally on courses, they're quite tiring, they're quite intensive. Yeah. Um, you only remember like a fraction of what you learn on the course and you really feel like an idiot who doesn't know how to do anything, unless that's just me. No, that's not you. We yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting for 12 hours, your butt Being told literally all the turns stuff into that you the don't seat. know. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, but on this course, I, I got it. It just clicked. It, it was just amazing. I could do it as soon as I'd been taught the techniques, and that was it. I just yeah. flew with it. Oh, that's amazing. You found yeah. your passion. I did. I Yay. really did. I'm, I'm absurdly <laughs> passionate about scar tissue, right? Yeah. Possibly unhealthily. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, there's a border between yes. Is it yes. insanity and genius. It's okay. <laughs> Not saying I, I don't accost strangers. I've, that's that's <laughs> my limit. <laughs> Yeah, she doesn't yell at people walking down the street. No, I don't. Yeah. I want to, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so you more specialize, I know, with like breast cancer survivors and like yes. post um, post mastectomies mastectomy and radiation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so many women they they beat cancer. They go through all of this horrible treatment. They come out the other side. Um, they finish the chemo. They finish the radiation, but they still have pain. Right. Um, typically they get a pain into the armpit that keeps them awake all night. They get pain points where the mesh attaches, um, the tightness of the scarring keeps pulling the shoulders forward and just everything hurts. And they go for regular physio but it doesn't address the scar tissue and the pain remains. Right. And they think this is my life from now on. Which is so unfair because it, it can be so much better. So I've got a fantastic couple of oncologists to refer patients to me here and I can really get in there and help. Yeah. It's, it's amazing to be able to take away someone's pain and it's so simple. It's just hands on untwisting it, unwinding it and, and they have relief. Yeah. So when you work with a patient, is it, um, it's obviously more manual tension and you said and cupping before. Um, so do you just follow the scar or like what do you... Basically, yeah. <laughs> um, I've learned all sorts of fancy techniques and an order to do things, and I've got that kind of back of my mind, but you treat what you find, and I have my logical starting point, and I follow it, and I have to sometimes switch off the logical part of my brain and just go where it takes me. Yeah. Um, because sometimes it takes you where you really don't expect it. I had a mastectomy patient who came to see me for neck pain. Very common presentation. Yeah. The scar tightness ends up pulling you forward, so your neck has to pull back and your neck hurts. And I treated her mastectomy scars and she had a bit of improvement, but not all the way. And I couldn't figure out what I was missing. Finally realized it was her C-section scar from 14 years previously. Treated oh, wow. that and that finally released the whole system and her neck pain improved. Well, I guess it, it does make sense, like, anatomically, like, you know, if something is pulling down here, it yeah. just pulls your whole so system forward. And... I see that a lot, the C-section scar is pulling you forward, so your neck has to pull back, you've got that digestive issue as well, lower back pain, but normally if I see a mastectomy patient, it's the mastectomy scar causing all the problems, right. so I, I didn't even think to check for other scars. Yeah, not a previous <laughs> yes. scar back. So lesson learned, get the full history. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, that's fascinating. So, how did you get to Dubai? To um, I normally say idiot husband, but that's not very nice. <laughs> um, my lovely husband, <laughs> wonderful hey, husband. Matt. <laughs> um, no, I'd reached a point where I was working in Cape Town that I needed to make a change. I was at a really, really nice practice there. Mm -hmm. um, I was fully booked, I had a great boss. Um, I had regular patients, so I knew everyone. I lived across the road from work. It was really, really easy and wonderful, and I had no reason to change ever. <laughs> and my boss, who's still a good friend, she said to me that it was, it was time to, to take a next step and spread my wings and open my own practice. So that was around the time that my then boyfriend, now husband, was moving to Dubai. Okay. So I decided that, well, if I was gonna make a change, Let's make it a really huge, scary change and move halfway around the world. So here I am. Yeah. And when did you move to Dubai? That was end of 2015. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, <laughs> four years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> time Coming flies quickly. It really does. Yeah. So, what is your overall like philosophy of health? Like, how do you look at a patient and help them and treat them? Um, so, I have, as I think most people at this clinic, a holistic view of health. It's not just freedom from pain. It's um, health on all levels: physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. Yeah. Um, so when I treat someone, I'm very much aware that I'm not just treating their body. It's, it's creating a safe space. As my boss used to say, you are holding on so they can let go, and mm -hmm. you are you're holding. It's just holding. Um, it's letting people find their own way. I facilitate. I can't, I can't fix anything. Even yeah. with a scar unwinding, I'm just giving the body cues, and it's sorting itself out. So it's providing the environment and the tools for someone to, to heal themselves. And good health is whatever it means to that person. I can't tell you if you're healthy or not. Yeah. Um, it's all about how you feel. Even yeah. with treatment, um, some people, so with mastectomy scars specifically, um, some women want absolute symmetry. Some just want to be free from pain. Right. So it's all about um, your parameters and what's important to you. Yeah, everybody's definition of health is definitely yeah, different. You know, everybody wants different things, we have different goals, all that type of thing. I always say that to my patients when I see them that my goal is to have my patients do what they love to do. Like I that's love my that. yeah, so yeah. that's that's always my goal when I see a patient. Like if, if honestly if they want to lay on the couch and watch Netflix <laughs> free of pain, we'll get them there. But you know, also if they want to run an Iron Man we'll get them there, you know? So it really depends on the person and what their like, yeah, true definition exactly. of what being healthy to them means. Yeah. So tell me about your most interesting patient. Oh my goodness. That <laughs> feels like a competition. No, 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 no. Okay, so maybe top five. <laughs> but I know we were talking uh, previously before the show, and you said you had a, a patient that was attacked by a water buffalo? Oh, oh you want my Africa stories. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, it was fascinating. So um, what happened? So... <laughs> Back to my community service year, um, it was a really, really rural environment and people would often travel very far to come to the hospital and we would see some very interesting cases. I remember our weekly meeting, someone brought along an x-ray, held it up for everyone to see. Some guy had been attacked with a spear and it was still all the way through his body. It was oh this gosh. massive diagonal line through the body. It's like psychology class with, was it Phineas Gage when this had this? Uh, Remember yes. that? Yeah, it's like the old. <laughs> yes. Okay, so Africa style. <laughs> the big psychology um, study of yeah. the 1800s. So, yes, there was this poor woman who had been attacked by a water buffalo. They'd, there were certain times in the year when people were given permission to go into the game reserves to gather reeds. So yeah. she had been diligently gathering her reeds. Uh, water buffalo oh, disagreed wow. with this and she was attacked. So. She survived and was mostly fine, but had so much going on at her belly. Um, lots of lingering problems that I couldn't fix at the time. Yeah. And this woman haunts me. <laughs> I really want to go back and Track using what I know now, yeah. see if I could make a difference to her. Oh, that's um, amazing. Yeah, it really, her whole belly had been affected. She was you know, still farming, raising her kids, doing everything, but she was in pain. Yeah. Um, but yes, there were all... I, treated someone else who was also attacked by a water buffalo. This is <laughs> it's quite rare. <laughs> yes. No, not common, not common at all. Um, there was a kid who had been bitten by a fish. There were all the snake bites. Um, Snakes. Yeah, exciting injuries there. Yeah. Um, and again, something I'd like to go back and treat knowing what I know now. TB. So we all oh, know about really? TB of the lungs, yeah. but there you get TB abdomen, TB wrist. You can get TB of anything. Mm -hmm. So anytime there was something really mysterious that wasn't responding to normal treatment, you had to consider, is it TB of random body part? Right. Of course. So there are those people that I'd like to go back and, oh, and try and treat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's interesting as a as a practitioner, you always kind of look back and think about that one person that you saw in oh, your first yes. or second year of practice. We really didn't know that much. And <laughs> it's called practice for a reason. And um, yeah. yeah. And so when you like you think back, you're like, oh, if I only would have known how to do this thing back then, you know. Who are some of your? I know you mentioned two people already, but some of your mentors that you look up to, that you've like 
that you followed and inspired you to get into what you do? Um, well, the one was Marjorie Brooke, yeah. who developed the scar techniques that I use. Um, then there's a South African physio who actually recently passed away about a week ago, a bicycle oh, accident. Yeah, absolutely awful. Willem Vary, and he was the one who trained the, the visually impaired physio that I initially learned those, those techniques from. I yeah. did go on to do his course, by the way, oh, good. in the Amsterdam. Oh, yes. Okay, you had to go to them? Yes, <laughs> yes. It cost a whole lot more than if I'd <laughs> just done the course in South Africa. Um, yeah, he was amazing, just always trying to learn more and teach people. That's the thing with scar work or any of this. Um, as you say, people don't know about it, but it makes such a difference. So it's yeah. a lot of just trying to, to spread the word and put it out there that help is available. Yeah. What other kind of things do you see that are connected to scars? So from a bias point of view, yeah. the abdominal organs. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of people have had abdominal surgery and just like trying to get things to slide after scarring or trauma, you can get exactly the same issues going on with the digestive system. If you've had um, bad stomach conditions, anything with inflammation, irritation, mm -hmm. even a fender bender where the, the seat belt, like just any type of trauma. Yes. So it doesn't really have to be an actual like cut. No. Physical. It could just be. No. Um, someone who does a lot of martial arts and they keep getting kicked in the stomach. You know, that's <laughs> yes. You MMA. All those guys. Yes. All yeah. of those. Um, so you get inflammation, and then as the body is healing itself, you get fibrosis. It lays down lots of little layers to try and heal itself, but it doesn't differentiate between different structures. Right. So as it heals, it does a great job of sorting you out, but structures might be stuck together. So um, extreme example, I saw someone who had a C-section, and um, it was the doctor who didn't differentiate between layers. Uterus oh. and bladder were actually sewn together. So oh doctors, you expect to know better. Yeah. Um, but the body, it does just attach everything to itself. So um, appendix scars, no issue at the time. But years later, you end up with hip pain or a bit of a digestive issue or constipation or lower back pain. So oh, it's really putting everything together. Um, I do try to get the organs to slide past each other, and if I can, I'll incorporate scar techniques. But it just it runs through and around and between all the other treatment modalities. Yeah, I um, I know you recently took a course on visceral manipulation. Yes. Yeah. Three courses, in fact. Oh, three courses. <laughs> <laughs> She's very well qualified. Um, <laughs> did you want to talk any about that at all? Uh, yeah. So I've done. A couple of different approaches now to visceral manipulation. One is very much hands-on, um, like direct manual. Find the stomach, does it move up, does it move down? If it's not sliding in a direction, you keep nudging into it and get it to move freely. The other approach is Burrell visceral manipulation. Okay. Um, it's very subtle, sounds impossible until you're doing it, and then you realize it's all possible. That's um, you kind of feel where you're getting pulled on the belly. Yeah. Uh, I start off by resting my hand on someone's head. I feel ridiculous doing this, but <laughs> I do actually get pulled in a direction. Um, and I've learned to trust that and follow it, and trust. it'll take me to a specific spot. Yeah, trust and it's your innate. weird, it's so <laughs> accurate. Yeah. There's someone I was treating for something else entirely, and I was pulled to the spot on the left. And it turned out, oh yes, I had issues there a couple of years ago. They tried to have a scope, but it got stuck at that spot. And that's where I was pulled, so that's where I treated. Again, switching off the logical brain. That's because um, you're listening to your Nate and trusting yourself. Yes, yes. You're a follow the hands. You're follow a the hands. Healer. That's what this that's what the show is all about. Yeah, exactly. Interviewing healers. Um, yeah, so Burrell following what you feel, yeah. not trying to prescribe anything, not looking logically, but following what the body tells you. And you, you feel the innate movement of each organ mm -hmm. and help the organs to untwist themselves. Um, I think of it as like a pendant necklace. Okay. <laughs> uh, sometimes it gets all tangled up yeah. and you can't untangle it yourself. But if you hold the pendant up, then the arms of the chain can untwist themselves. Yeah. So you find the twisted bit, you find the pendant, you, 
you engage, you apply just a little bit of, it, of tension and then let it unwind itself. It's very gentle, it's subtle, but it's profound. If I overtreat doing these weird things that feel like I'm doing nothing, yeah. people are really in pain the next day. I've got to, to go very gently and, and hold back, <laughs> not try and fix everything in one session. Not all in one, not, not all in one time. Exactly. <laughs> so what kind of healing techniques do you use for yourself and as your family? Oh, I'm terrible. Ignore it all. <laughs> we keep pushing through. Um, I recently did a Reiki course because I felt like I was putting everything into my patients mm -hmm. and I needed to learn how to protect myself. Um, yeah, I'm still not sure if it's the right modality for me, but um, my hands used to get very hot when I was treating mm -hmm. and the last couple of years in Dubai, I've lost that heat in my hands. So during this Reiki course, my heat yeah. came back. Amazing. So I'm like, okay, cool, it did something. You got your fire back. <laughs> Don't know if it's protecting <laughs> me, but yes. Yeah. So... Like, it was still fairly recent, and you're supposed to do Reiki on yourself for 21 days after the course. I'm trying to do that. Yeah. It means that, if nothing else, I'm having quiet time. <laughs> um, if I'm desperate, I meditate, but I have to be, like, really at my wits end, migraine headaches, stressing out, and then I'll, then I'll meditate. Otherwise, my best personal therapy is <laughs> making my husband go for walks with me. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Just get outside. outside yep. Get some movement. Um, in Cape Town, I'll be outside a lot more. Here, it's it's moving towards summer, so it's not quite so easy. But let's go outside and move, and that's that's the main thing that I do for myself. I try and eat well. Occasionally, go for massages. Go and see colleagues for treatments. Thank you, Danda. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> but I'm not not particularly good at looking after myself in general. Well, I seem to, it seems to be a common trend amongst a lot of people in the healing world. It's like yeah, as we, a group, we give we're so much. I know we give so much, but then when we take care of ourselves, we stay up too late, we don't eat well, we don't exercise enough. Like, you know, we do all this stuff. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> Note to self. <laughs> I'll encourage you and you can encourage me. Absolutely. Accountability. Yes. 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 100%. Yeah. So there's there any like final words or piece of advice you give for people? Like if you want like specific things you tell your patients or um, keep looking. I keep treating people who who say, like, I wish I'd known about this sooner and people who've been to multiple therapists and they'd they pretty much given up and like, Oh, I don't want to try a new person and keep trying. Yeah. Um, don't give up. Ask around you'll eventually get the right answer and, and find the right person to help you. Not, not all things work for everybody. Um, That's very true. I tried acupuncture. I felt like it was helpful, but it didn't affect my symptoms at all. But I know people who get amazing results from acupuncture. Yeah. Um, same with chiropractics. Same yeah. with reflexology. Same with antibiotics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever yeah. it is, um, you might not respond well to one specific thing, but you will respond well to something else. Keep looking around. And if you have one bad experience with one bad practitioner, it doesn't mean you should give up on the profession. Yes, If you get a absolutely. bad haircut, <laughs> it doesn't mean you should never go to the hairdresser again. You just went to a bad one, or maybe they're having a bad day. Also true, yeah, you just um, never know. I'm very open with my patients if, if I feel like I'm quite far away for them, or maybe they need someone who's more like gung-ho and sports, yeah. I will give them names. I can't fix everybody, and I think we all need to be aware of that. Absolutely. Sometimes you need to shop around. Yeah. So that's my main message. Keep looking. If you need help, you will find it. Don't give up. And if the first couple of people you try aren't the right match for you, that's all it means. They weren't the right match for you. Try something else. Try somebody else. Yeah. A lot of times we're definitely not like one size fits all. No, completely not. <laughs> you know, there's, there's different people, there's different practitioners, there's lots of people out there that really need to, but you just need to keep searching, just like yes. you said. Yeah. And, and ask, you don't have to accept mediocre healthcare or go to sessions with yes. someone who doesn't stop talking and you can't handle it. Just ask around, you'll, you'll get that, you'll find yeah. the right person. Oh, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for doing Pleasure. this interview. It was really fun. Oh, thank you for yeah. inviting me yeah. to join your inaugural podcast. <laughs> the inaugural podcast. So thank you so much. And yeah, we'll hopefully talk to you again soon. Awesome. I look forward to it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for tuning in. 
to the World of Healing podcast. This podcast should be listened to as educational purposes only. This is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease. Please do not apply any of this own information without speaking to your own personal doctor first. If you liked what you heard, please leave us a comment or get in touch on Facebook or Instagram at World of Healing Show. And until next time, keep smiling. Yay!